The Chinese garden is a landscape garden style which has evolved over 3,000 years. It includes both the vast gardens of the Chinese emperors and members of the imperial family, built for pleasure and to impress, and the more intimate gardens created by scholars, poets, former government officials, soldiers and merchants, made for reflection and escape from the outside world. They create an idealized miniature landscape, which is meant to express the harmony that should exist between man and nature. A typical Chinese garden is enclosed by walls and includes one or more ponds, rock works, trees and flowers, and an assortment of halls and pavilions within the garden, connected by winding paths and zigzag galleries. By moving from structure to structure, visitors can view a series of carefully composed scenes, unrolling like a scroll of landscape paintings. A Chinese garden was not meant to be seen all at once, the plan of a classical Chinese garden presented the visitor with a series of perfectly composed and framed glimpses of scenery, a view of a pond, or of a rock, or a grove of bamboo, a blossoming tree, or a view of a distant mountain peak or a pagoda. The 16th century Chinese writer and philosopher Ji Cheng instructed garden builders to hide the vulgar and the common as far as the eye can see, and include the excellent and the splendid. Some early Western visitors to the Imperial Chinese gardens felt they were chaotic, crowded with buildings in different styles, without any seeming order. But the Jesuit priest Jean Denis Atirat, who lived in China from 1739 and was a court painter for the Qianlong Emperor, observed there was a beautiful disorder, an anti-symmetry, in the Chinese garden. One admires the art with which this irregularity is carried out. Everything is in good taste, and so well arranged, that there is not a single view from which all the beauty can be seen, you have to see it piece by piece. Chinese classical gardens varied greatly in size. The largest garden in Suzhou, the humble administrator's garden, was a little over 10 hectares in area, with one-fifth of the garden occupied by the pond. But they did not have to be large. Ji Cheng built a garden for Wu Youyou, the treasurer of Jinling, that was just under one hectare in size, and the tour of the garden was only 400 steps long from the entrance to the last viewing point, but Wu Youyou said it contained all the marvels of the province in a single place. The classical garden was surrounded by a wall, usually painted white, which served as a pure backdrop for the flowers and trees. A pond of water was usually located in the center. Many structures, large and small, were arranged around the pond. In the garden described by Ji Ching above, the structures occupied two-thirds of the hectare, while the garden itself occupied the other third. In a scholar garden the central building was usually a library or study, connected by galleries with other pavilions which served as observation points of the garden features. These structures also helped divide the garden into individual scenes or landscapes. Scholar gardens also often used what was called borrowed scenery jijing, where unexpected views of scenery outside the garden, such as mountain peaks, seem to be an extension of the garden itself. Chinese gardens are filled with architecture, halls, pavilions, temples, galleries, bridges, and towers occupying a large part of the space. The humble administrator's garden in Suzhou has 48 structures, including a residence, several halls for family gatherings and entertainment, 18 pavilions for viewing different features of the garden, and an assortment of towers, galleries, and bridges, all designed for seeing different parts of the gardens from different points of views. The garden structures are not designed to dominate the landscape, but to be in harmony with it, classical gardens traditionally have these structures. The Ceremony Hall, Ting, or Room a building used for family celebrations or ceremonies, usually with an interior courtyard, not far from the entrance gate, the principal pavilion, de ting, or large room, for the reception of guests, for banquets and for celebrating holidays, such as New Year's and the Festival of Lanterns. It often has a veranda around the building to provide cool and shade. The Pavilion of Flowers, Hua Ting, or Flower Room. Located near the residence, this building has a rear courtyard filled with flowers, plants, and a small rock garden, the pavilion facing the four directions, SI Mian Ting, or Four Doors Room. 
This building has folding or movable walls, for opening up a panoramic view of the garden, the Lotus Pavilion, Yi Hua Ting, or Lotus Room. Built next to a lotus pond, to see the flowers bloom and appreciate their aroma. The Pavilion of Mandarin Ducks, Yuan Yang Ting, or Mandarin Ducks Room. This building is divided into two sections, one facing north used in summer, facing a lotus pond which provided cool air, and the southern part used in winter, with a courtyard planted with pine trees, which remained evergreen, and plum trees, whose blossoms announced the arrival of spring. In addition to these larger halls and pavilions, the garden is filled with smaller pavilions, also called ting, or room, which are designed for providing shelter from the sun or rain, for contemplating a scene, reciting a poem, taking advantage of a breeze, or simply resting. Pavilions might be located where the dawn can best be watched, where the moonlight shines on the water, where autumn foliage is best seen, where the rain can best be heard on the banana leaves, or where the wind whistles through the bamboo stalks. They are sometimes attached to the wall of another building or sometimes stood by themselves at viewpoints of the garden, by a pond or at the top of a hill. Gardens also often feature two-story towers, Lu or GE, usually at the edge of the garden, with a lower story made of stone and a whitewashed upper story, two-thirds the height of the ground floor, which provided a view from above of certain parts of the garden or the distant scenery. Some gardens have a picturesque stone pavilion in the form of a boat, located in the pond. Called an xie, fang, or shifang. These generally had three parts, a kiosk with winged gables at the front, a more intimate hall in the center, and a two-story structure with a panoramic view of the pond at the rear. Galleries, lang, are narrow covered corridors which connect the buildings, protect the visitors from the rain and sun, and also help divide the garden into different sections. These galleries are rarely straight, they zigzag or are serpentine, following the wall of the garden, the edge of the pond, or climbing the hill of the rock garden. They have small windows, sometimes round or in odd geometric shapes, to give glimpses of the garden or scenery to those passing through. Windows and doors are an important architectural feature of the Chinese garden. Sometimes they are round, moon windows, or a moon gate, or oval, hexagonal or octagonal, or in the shape of a vase or a piece of fruit. Sometimes they have highly ornamental ceramic frames. The window may carefully frame a branch of a pine tree, or a plum tree in blossom, or another intimate garden scene. Bridges are another common feature of the Chinese garden. Like the galleries, they are rarely straight, but zigzag, called the nine-turn bridges, or arch over the ponds, suggesting the bridges of rural China, and providing viewpoints of the garden. Bridges are often built from rough timber, or stone slab raised pathways. Some gardens have brightly painted or lacquered bridges, which give a light-hearted feeling to the garden. Gardens also often include small, austere houses for solitude and meditation, sometimes in the form of rustic fishing huts, and isolated buildings, which serve as libraries or studios, shufang. The artificial mountain, jiashan, or rock garden is an integral element of Chinese classical gardens. The mountain peak was a symbol of virtue, stability, and endurance in Confucian philosophy and in the I Ching. A mountain peak on an island was also a central part of the legend of the Isles of the Immortals, and thus became a central element in many classical gardens. The first rock garden appeared in Chinese garden history in Tu Yuan, literally, Rabbit Garden, built during the Western Han Dynasty, 206 BCE. During the Tang Dynasty, the rock was elevated to the status of an art object, judged by its form, xing, substance, xi, color, se, and texture, one, as well as by its softness, transparency, and other factors. The poet Bo Zhuyi, 772-846, wrote a catalog of the famous rocks of Lake Tai, called Tai Hu Shirji. These rocks, of limestone sculpted by erosion, became the most highly prized for gardens, during the Song Dynasty, the artificial mountains were made mostly of earth. 
But Emperor Huizong, 1100 to 1125, nearly ruined the economy of the Song Empire by destroying the bridges of the Grand Canal so he could carry huge rocks by barge to his imperial garden. During the Ming Dynasty, the use of piles of rocks to create artificial mountains and grottos reached its peak. During the Qing Dynasty, the Ming rock gardens were considered too artificial and the new mountains were composed of both rocks and earth. The artificial mountain in Chinese gardens today usually has a small view pavilion at the summit. In smaller classical gardens, a single scholar rock represents a mountain, or a row of rocks represents a mountain range. Flowers and trees, along with water, rocks and architecture, are the fourth essential element of the Chinese garden. They represent nature in its most vivid form, and contrast with the straight lines of the architecture and the permanence, sharp edges and immobility of the rocks. They change continually with the seasons, and provide both sounds, the sound of rain on banana leaves or the wind in the bamboo, and aromas to please the visitor. Each flower and tree in the garden had its own symbolic meaning. The pine, bamboo, and Chinese plum were considered the three friends of winter by the scholars who created classical gardens, prized for remaining green or blooming in winter. They were often painted together by artists like Xiao Mengjian. For scholars, the pine was the emblem of longevity and tenacity, as well as constants in friendship. The bamboo, a hollow straw, represented a wise man, modest and seeking knowledge, and was also noted for being flexible in a storm without breaking. Plum trees were revered as the symbol of rebirth after the winter and the arrival of spring. During the Song Dynasty, the favorite tree was the winter plum tree, appreciated for its early pink and white blossoms and sweet aroma. The peach tree in the Chinese garden symbolized longevity and immortality. Peaches were associated with the classic story The Orchard of Shi Wangmu, the Queen Mother of the West. This story said that in Shi Wangmu's legendary orchard, peach trees flowered only after 3,000 years, did not produce fruit for another 3,000 years, and did not ripen for another 3,000 years. Those who ate these peaches became immortal. This legendary orchard was pictured in many Chinese paintings. Pear trees were the symbol of justice and wisdom. The word pear was also a homophone for quit or separate, and it was considered bad luck to cut a pear, for it would lead to the breakup of a friendship or romance. The pear tree could also symbolize a long friendship or romance, since the tree lived a long time. The apricot tree symbolized the way of the Mandarin or the government official. During the Tang Dynasty, those who passed the imperial examination were rewarded with the banquet in the Garden of the Apricot Trees, or Xingyuan. The fruit of the pomegranate tree was offered to young couples so they would have male children and numerous descendants. The willow tree represented the friendship and the pleasures of life. Guests were offered willow branches as a symbol of friendship. Of the flowers in the Chinese garden, the most appreciated were the orchid, peony, and lotus. During the Tang Dynasty, the peony, the symbol of opulence and a flower with a delicate fragrance, was the most celebrated flower in the garden. The poet Zhou Dunyi wrote a famous elegy to the lotus, comparing it to a junzi, a man who possessed integrity and balance. The orchid was the symbol of nobility and of impossible love, as in the Chinese expression, a faraway orchid in a lonely valley. The lotus was admired for its purity, and its efforts to reach out of the water to flower in the air made it a symbol of the search for knowledge. The chrysanthemum was elegized the poet Tao Yuanming, who surrounded his hermit's hut with the flower, and wrote a famous verse, at the feet of the eastern fence, I pick a chrysanthemum, in the distance, detached and serene, I see the mountains of the south.